Hi and welcome to episode 45 of the Bex, Bex Creates podcast. Um, my name is Bex and I'm coming to you from a sunny this minute Bristol but it will be raining in a minute I expect. Um, it is May after all. Um, <laughs> where I live with my husband Paul, our almost one-year-old Jasper and our 10-year-old Norwegian forest cat Mufasa. Um, it's been a while. Things have been so busy and hectic, but I've been desperate to come back and see you guys because I've got loads to share. Um, Jasper's taken to having some quite long naps in the morning, so I've been quite productive with my knitting. Um, and I've got quite a lot of things that are gifts, so I wanted to show you before they got given away. Um, and, oh God, do, do excuse my face as well. I look very tired and quite red. <laughs> I've just been putting a roast on um, and I've not had great sleep for a few days so I look a bit hanging but it was now or never. Um, yeah windows to actually podcast are quite rare so I had to take my opportunities. Now um, right at the top of the episode I need to apologise because I've only just found out that because I am related to um, a yarn dyer that I talk about a lot obviously Bird Street Yarn, my sister is Claire, um, I should have always been um, marking every time I talk about her yarn as ad gifted. Um, not that she ever asks me to talk about her yarn, I just happen to use it a lot because she gives me a lot um, and it's gorgeous, I'd talk about it anyway even if she wasn't my sister. Um, so yeah it never really occurred to me because it wasn't kind of a you know a deal kind of thing um but it turns out if you are related to somebody whose products you are talking about then you should um state it as ad gifted so i will from now on start putting that underneath the video um but i'm sure lots of you are as big fans as, of bird street yarn as i am so um i'm sure you won't mind um but anyway to say thank you claire has actually given me a prize for you guys so um this is a gorgeous project bag. I've got one exactly the same and it is lovely. It's really nice and roomy. It's got this like dark green, sort of bottle green and pale pink um, leopard print fabric. It's gorgeous neon ribbon drawstring. It's got like a really pretty neon pink and gold um, splattery lining. So it's really nice and easy to see what's in your bag. Um, and it's got like a really nice denim hoop with a a little um, D-ring on there to like attach stitch markers and stuff. And then inside she has put this gorgeous sock set. Oh, that's blowing out a tiny bit. It's a little bit darker than that. There we go, that's better. It's absolutely beautiful. So that's 100 grams of four ply and a 20 gram mini. She has also put a sachet of jasmine sock wash. Um, a little bunny uh, progress keeper which is also a bell sorry if it's not very clear in the packet but I don't want to take it out and this really cute little rose gold tin which is full of bulb stitch markers um, and I'm going to add to this prize with um, any pattern of your choice from my um, Ravelry store so um, to be in with a chance uh, to get this prize um, if you just leave a comment below and if you put bird street or one word in your comment um, then I'll know you're interested in this and I will pick a winner so it's it's May the 6th today um, which is bank holiday Monday here in England and in three weeks time there's another bank holiday Monday which also happens to be Jasper's first birthday so I will pick a winner on that next bank holiday Monday so um, entries will be open until May the 27th 2024 um, and yes I will pick a winner and Claire said she's happy to send it out worldwide so everyone's welcome um so yeah just a big thank you from me and from claire and john for putting up with me banging on about their yarn but obviously their yarn's beautiful so it's it's not a hardship is it um so what was i gonna say yeah things have been busy around here i've actually just gone back to work um 
yeah 11 months after Jasper was born and it's been okay because I've been really lucky I've actually only gone back to work one day a week which has been just the dream really because it was sort of proving quite stressful to try and juggle things um so one day a week means I get to you know still keep my hand in with the job that I love and you know um be in the school that I love because I've been there for a very long time and my colleagues are like family to me they're you know they're amazing I've worked with lots of them for a long time and I get to spend time with the children which is great too I'm in reception which I've I've never done since I've been qualified I, I did um reception placements when I was um training um so yeah to be back with the little four and five year olds is just really fun they're really cute really lovely so yeah it's really nice and Jasper has a day with his grandparents and his cousin who's the same age so he has loads of fun so it's actually you know just a really nice new part of our routine so it's going well but on that day I don't get a lot of knitting done because by the time I get home and you know do dinner get all the jobs done that I would have done during the day um I'm tired <laughs> and Jasper has been really treating me since I've been back to really bad sleepless nights the night before I work so that's been fun <laughs> but yes there we go so I have managed to get loads in it I'm really excited to show you some of these things I've got some really fun things to show you I've got a few projects on the go and I've got only a couple of acquisitions to show you but yeah let's crack on because I've got a roast cooking downstairs so I need to get this done before that's ready so my first finished object is a big one it is my second um granny wrap triangle it's huge it's very hard to show it um in one go but um i'm so pleased with it not least because um i started this quite a while ago i can't even remember now when was it maybe like February or something and um I just sort of picked the colours randomly because I I had I don't know if you can see up there I've got um a big like plastic cocktail glass which I keep all my minis in and it's been absolutely overflowing for years so I was like right I just gotta use up some of these minis so I just got out all the ones that kind of went together um so they sort of came out all these sort of jewel tones and um I started it and then we went and ordered a new sofa and when the sofa arrived arrived it was um it coordinated beautifully it's kind of a it's called teal but um it's like not far off of this um border color so that was elsewhere in the shawl so I actually decided to do the border so it looked really nice on the back of the sofa so and I've used it loads already like because it just wraps around my shoulders so easily when I'm up like early in the morning with Jasper and he's just playing on the floor I just like wrap it around me um and you can kind of tie it around you like sort of hapt so that it um you know you can wear it while you're moving around and doing jobs and stuff so yeah it's coming really handy so far because the weather is still so cold it's may and it's freezing it's so annoying um but yeah i'm thrilled with it and it used up loads of yarn i think it's a it's over 500 grams of yarn um and yeah i love it i loved i thought this color was really successful this like chartreuse sort of green um, but I only had one mini of it, so I've got a stripe there and there. I could have done with another stripe further down a bit, really, but hey, it's fine. It was just use up scraps and minis, so I love it, and it's coming in really useful already, so that's great. Um, my next finished objects are all of the same type, so I've been on a mission because... Um, I like to wear trainers so I like sh to have some shorty socks but all of my shorty socks I was just avoiding because they were slipping off the back of my ankle and getting really annoying um now I don't know why I think well I think I do I think my feet are quite wide but my ankles are quite narrow I'm a bit like a duck <laughs> um so I think I needed them to be tighter around my ankles i have also lost some weight and my feet are quite a lot narrower um so whether it's something to do with that i don't know but anyway i just decided i just needed to get rid and start again because i wasn't wearing them they were just taking up loads of space i had about 15 pairs that were just taking up loads of space in my um in my sock drawer so i decided and i thought it'd be a good way to do a bit of stash busting as well to um start making some new shorty socks and it's brilliant because it's a nice, quick, easy project to have on the needles for like car knitting. Like I end up in the car, 
well Jasper's napping on the drive quite often so it just like is a good project to have on the needle so they're flying off so you'll see I finished four pairs last month so um the first pair I actually went to um string which is a yarn store in Cheltenham which is owned by Vicky Brown Vicky Brown Designs and I went with Claire and my lovely friend Hannah who is Yarnia Designs and um, I picked up this yarn which was a, a um, Zauber ball which I've never had before actually as the tag um, and it was just 50 grams but of a sort of a sport weight yarn so um, these knit up so fast because I just wanted to see there's no pattern repeat in this, this yarn so it literally went from was it that way I can't see yeah one into the other like that yeah um so it was so fun i think i bought the yarn on the thursday i didn't cast them on until maybe the friday and they were finished the pair was finished by monday but yeah they were on bigger needles because it was like a sport weight um so yeah they did they did fly off the needles particularly quickly those ones um but the others i'll talk about these in a bit more detail because um these are kind of the, the numbers that I've settled on. So these, I don't know much about the yarns. I kind of had them in stash and I don't remember them. So whether somebody gave them to me, I don't know, but it's just this lovely self striping. So what I've found is working for me at the moment is to start on a 2.25 needle, which is small for me because I'm a very tight knitter. Um, and what I always used to do was do a very short cuff, maybe six rounds of rib and go straight into the heel. So what I've done now is I've done 10 rounds of rib and then 10 rounds of knit before going into the heel then I've done a heel flap and gusset which I've gotten really into I can't believe it and then after the heel I switched to a 2.5 and zoomed down the foot and that seems to be helping I think a bit higher on the ankle and a bit tighter and that seems to be the thing that's working at the moment but I figure what I should do really before I knit two more too many more pairs is just try these out um and see and just make sure that is definitely what i want so yeah those ones are a bit of a a mystery yarn but they're lovely they're so pretty and i just love like how fun shorty socks can be um sorry chucking the yarn labels everywhere sock blockers all over the place this pair was um a lovely skein of yarn i had from woolly mama which I'd not had before, but I just love neon, so it was right up my street. This one's called Hopeless Romantic, and I just cast on with, um, oh, I've got a little end stick out there, cast on with just some random neon pink that I had in my drawer. It's probably the Socks Yeah one, but I couldn't be certain. This lovely lilac with loads of neon pops. Um, and I've been doing, um, uh, a heel flap and gusset with a garter edged heel so I think it shows best on these socks actually but it gives you such a neat finish because I always slip the first stitch of the row so that you get a really nice slip stitch to pick up so the, the joint is so neat and then I don't really there's a little gap there but you don't really get too much in the way of holes which I always used to find when I knit heel flap and gusset before so I'm really pleased with those and then the final pair sorry trying to be tidy as I go the final pair are these ones which the yarn is also woolly mama and the color is lemon sugar And I just love these, they're so zingy and fun. I might, I've got obviously quite a lot of leftovers from these because they only take about 40 grams per pair. So um, I might do something fun like stripes with the two Woolly Mama ones on another pair. But yeah, really pleased with those. So that's a nice start to uh, my new shorty sock collection. You'll see I've got another pair on the needles as well in a minute. Okay, um, next whip was a bit of a, I think it started off, I was going to knit this for myself and then I decided against it and actually it's come out quite small and I've got a notoriously big head so it wouldn't fit me anyway. This is the Jojo's hat by Jodie Brown from the Grocery Girls. This is quite a go-to hat for me. It's really lovely and easy, DK weight, um, nice to follow but a nice bit of interest. Um, the yarn is a second from Bird Street Yarn. I think it was supposed to be 
merlin but it's got more like brown patches than it should um but i think it looks really cute and i just added this um navy blue trim it's pom-pom that i had in my stash um and i'm really pleased with that but yeah it is quite small let me see if i can put it under ruin my hair now yeah see it's quite small so that might be one for freya or something like that um yeah, it's probably more of a child size or it's definitely somebody with a smaller head than me. And yes, I have completely ruined my hair now. Excellent. Ah, oh, well, can't look much worse anyway. <laughs> um, Quickly show you these ones. These you've seen as a whip. They were on my needles for ages. Couldn't seem to finish them. I think this is the problem with starting Christmas socks after Christmas. You lose momentum, don't you? Um, But the yarn is so pretty. So the yarn is Gingerbread Snowflake by um, Green Lampkin Yarns, who's my lovely friend Suzanne. Um, it's just gorgeous. Look at it and it sparkles. Um, just so pretty. I did a magic heel. And yeah, that was about all, in, all there is to say about those, really. There are two. Um, so those will go away to go in my Christmas box of socks which I have actually, I think I've got enough pairs now to wear a different one every day of Advent, which is cool. Um, they've been years in the making. Right, um, this podcast, I, I am actually, you won't actually see this podcast until Wednesday this week because um, it's my mum's birthday on Wednesday. Happy birthday, mum. I know you'll be watching. Um, so, Obviously, I don't want her to see her present before the day and I've knit her something. Now, you might think that knitting something for somebody with a May birthday is a bit mad because obviously it's warm. But um, my mum's hobby is keeping warm. <laughs> She's always cold and she loves to be warm. So I know she won't be sad about this at all. Um, now, she told me she, when I knit my Simon shawl, she absolutely loved it. So I said I'd make her one, but I decided to make it for her for her birthday in the end. So here it is. It does need blocking. Oh, and I've just noticed there's a, is that a stitch marker I saw there then? Oh, did I see move? I saw something move. Yeah. What is it? That's funny. Oh, is it just a strobing? I think it's just strobing. Yeah, it's just strobing. Sorry about that. I won't show it for too long then. Um, so, um, this, the yarn I used was some seconds from Bird Street again. Um, the purple, dark purple is Figgy and the brownie colour is Rocky Road. And I happen to have um, a couple of skeins of each so you need 100 grams uh, sorry 200 grams of each color or like just over 100 grams sorry of each color um so it's more than one skein of each um so i thought that would be perfect and i'm just really thrilled with it i know mum's gonna love this nice big size i love simon's shoes i'm definitely gonna knit another one um such a wonderful pattern by my friends joe and rachel at twin set and pearl it was actually by Joe technically, but you know, <laughs> I've got to mention them both. Um, yeah, just love that. And then um, because I had some more of the yarn left, I knit a pair of these um, thorny briar mitts, which is um, a pattern by Suzanne from Green Lambkin again. Um, so I've done those in the figgy colourway and those are DK. I love them. I'm so pleased with them. And they knit up. I think I knit them in like three days when I didn't even have, have that much knitting time. They're just so fast and they're so lovely. I've got a pair myself and they're so lovely to wear. Um, so, yeah, that's the Thorny Briar Mitts by Suzanne Kirkland Wells. And then I made this hat, um, which was a pattern I found on Ravelry and it's the designer's name's gone out of my head. The hat is called the March hat and it's got this stitch pattern which is called the seersucker pattern. Um, and I think the designer was called, oh, is it something like Megan Babin or something like that? I can't remember, but if you search March hat on Ravelry, I'm sure it will come up. Um, it was lovely, actually, because I learned to do a tubular cast on, which I'd never done before. So that was fun to learn a new technique. Um, 
now I've got a bit more headspace and a bit more time to do knitting it's really nice to get back into like learning some new techniques and trying some new patterns again rather than just sticking to sort of old favorites because that was all I had the headspace for and I love it I'm really pleased with it um might as well I've ruined my hair now anyway so I might as well go in with it um it's not going to look good because my hair is up it always looks better my hair down but yeah thrilled with that oh god I really am ruining my hair now oh well yeah so that is going to be my lovely mum's birthday present on Wednesday so I hope she will love it and I know you know even though she probably won't get to wear it for a while she can she'll enjoy getting it out in the winter time and having it all fresh and new ready to wear so yeah lovely now the final finished object was a very recent cast on in fact um I only actually started it last weekend so um my brother-in-law Mark who lives in Nottingham has been texting me because he's gotten into cross stitch and I've not like I've done bits of cross stitch but I've never sort of been into it fanatically but you know I know bits and pieces about it so he he was asking me a few questions about it and um we were, we were somehow talking about patterns and he showed me a pattern with some chickens on and it, I said to him that um I knew some people who'd been knitting emotional support chickens and it was kind of a viral pattern and I showed him the picture and he was like oh my goodness that's adorable I love it so I decided I thought I'd make him one because I wanted an excuse to make one and I thought we can't have any more cuddly toys in this house at the moment really we've got quite enough um so let me introduce you to Hen Stefani <laughs> I love her hang on let's see if we can get a a good um a good thumbnail I probably won't but please let that be my thumbnail YouTube um yeah so here she is in all her glory um this pattern's amazing so it's the emotional support chicken and again the design has gone out of my head but I know it's in the top five on Ravelry so yeah it, you you will find it very easily um everyone seems to be knitting these at the moment so the great thing is obviously you can kind of use whatever yarn you want so I had two skeins of DK yarn from Bird Street that I thought would be the right colours. So I'm not entirely sure what the colours are, but I think they're something like Jasper and Old Number 7, something like that. Um, but I just thought they were the most perfect chicken colours. And then I decided the rest had to be neon. So I just used any neon scraps I could find, of which I had many, as you can probably imagine. Cute little yellow beak. Um, Sort of this neon coral for the comb and wattle um and then um i decided to crochet so you're supposed to crochet together this bit but i decided to crochet together the whole tail and i love the effect that gives and she's just so nice you can see why she's called an emotional support chicken because she's just a lovely shape there's something very pleasing and comforting about her so i think i am going to have trouble parting with her but i do love her he mark's going to love her so yeah, but she's so nice. I can thoroughly recommend the pattern. The short row shaping is really clever, but really simple. And because it's in garter, you don't have to pick up any of your wraps. So it's just like, it's really easy. I absolutely bashed this out. It was so quick and I just love her. You do need plenty of stuffing though, because she's quite round, but yeah. That's Hen Stefani. I hope you like her. So, sorry, sip of coffee. On to whips. So, oh, my first whip is one I'm I'm enjoying, but I've got I've got an indecisiveness about. So let me show you the pattern first of all. I am missing the stripometry shawl by Stephen West. I don't often really like go for Stephen West patterns. They're usually a bit over the top for me but the sort of graphic nature of that one just sort of caught my eye so I thought I'd give it a go and I've been really wanting to knit something in red and pink because they're just it's just my favorite color combination I love it so after lots of to and fro in I eventually settled on these two yarns which were again Bird Street seconds that I had in my stash the red's blowing out a bit that's a bit better there um, and then I had to decide on a third color and I 
I was going to go for like a speckle and it didn't feel right. I wanted it kind of a bit more bold and graphic than that. So in the end, I, I, I picked this pink fluff, which almost matches the other one. So I thought actually it'd be quite cool that it's like a, a contrast in texture rather than colour. But then when I cast it on and the, again, the construction's really cool. Um, it's modular, so there's lots of like putting stitches on hold. So this was the first section, which I think is going to be like the top corner like this. Um, and then I started this section and I decided to hold the, it's not mohair, it's Surrey Alpaca double to kind of make it up to finger and weight because, you know, it's not finger and weight on its own, but also held double is thicker than finger and weight. So I'm still not sure because it's making the stripes quite wide, but... I kind of think it would be okay and I can't think of what I would use instead. Part of me thought that maybe cream would be quite nice, like an undyed, so I could have like pink and cream, sort of like a strawberries and cream vibe, but then I wouldn't really want the red and the cream together. Um, so I think for now I'm going to stick with it and just be prepared that if I don't like it, then I will rip it back. But um, it's a really nice knit. It's, it's fun. I haven't put loads of work on it this week because I've just been chicken in but you know I think it will be really fun and obviously there's no rush anyway because it's summer so it'd be too warm for a while anyway because I don't think it's going to be a small shawl so yeah watch this space for that one I'm hopefully going to get back onto that one now because I don't have that many whips on the needles at the moment um this whip is one that I've been banging on about for ages so you know that I've had this special pom-pom that Claire bought me ages back um I think it's from yeah the crafty bird and it's really cool and I wanted to use it for myself on a hat and make it like a really really nice hat that I would love and it took me ages to settle on the yarn eventually I chose this one now I made some thorny briar mitts for myself in the willow colorway on this dk nep base um and this is actually sea glass but they're so close together and they didn't have another skein of willow so i just went with it so i'm knitting it in this which i think would be a good color because i've got sort of greeny blue eyes um and i have started i put it down for a long time i knit acres of one by one rib and now i'm on to the main part of the hat now this pattern is called the jasper hat um guess why i picked it um and i've actually knit one i knit one for jasper one for his cousin and one for paul's dad so the three of them had matching hats which is really cute and they've all worn them loads which is lovely um and it was quite an easy pattern so i thought i'd knit that but what i will say and i can't again i can't remember the designer I want to say it's something like Linda Whaley, but I can't be sure. Um, but to be honest, I don't think I'd fully recommend the pattern because I'm a very tight knitter. So usually I have to go up need a few needle sizes to make anything the right size. But actually with this, I knit it on the suggested needle size and the numbers from my size head came out. It was like this big. <laughs> it was enormous. It would have gone around my waist. So in the end, I've cast on the numbers for the 10 to 12 years hat, which I do not have a small head, as I've said before. So she must be like the tightest knitter in the whole world for that to be her gauge. I haven't actually measured the gauge, but, you know, it's a hat. Um, I've just been fitting it to my head. So, yeah, I've stuck with that. So I wouldn't overly recommend the pattern. I think it was free anyway. Um and it's just kind of a, a broken rib sort of texture. But I think it will be lovely when it's finished. And I'm really, I think the pom-pom will look gorgeous on it. So that will be nice. And it will match my um, mitts, which is always nice, isn't it? So, yes. Again, working on some very unseasonal projects at the moment. Um, <coughs> next one is just another addition to my shorty sock collection. And I have actually finished one of them. This yarn, I've lost the label, but it was bought for me by um, my friends Rachel and Jo, Twin Set and Pearl. Um, and I know it came from Beautiful Knitters in London. And I know it was an Australian yarn, but that's all I can remember. Um, but it's really cool. It's one of these sort of um, 
barber poly kind of color changing a bit like a zebra ball kind of feel so the you know the colors they're not going to match at all and i'm actually really tempted because it's a hundred gram skein to knit like maybe well maybe two pairs if i can get it out of there because obviously there's some cool color changes come up i'd like to use it all or if not i could just knit three socks and mix and match them or something um and it like no i'm keen to use it because it's so pretty and it's just been staring sitting there staring at me in my stash so um yeah i'm glad to to get it out of stash and actually on the needles so um pleased with that one but again it's not been getting loads of love recently but it's good to have a sort of a car knitting project on the needles and then this whip is another test knit for my friend hannah of yarnia designs um this pattern oh god i haven't checked no i hadn't checked if it was okay to show it but i know she's shown it on her instagram so it's not a secret test knit um this pattern is yet to be named um and it's just beautiful this one's flown off the needles um and i am one colour repeat into the second sock. Um, the colours I'm using are, guess again, Burr Street Yarn. Um, and I'm using an undyed. And then the minis are from their Reimagined Yarn Club from last month, which was Do You Think You Saw Us? And I know they're releasing at least some of these colours, if not all, into their permanent tonal um range so i know that this yellow here is called honey and this pink is called piglet um and they're just gorgeous i just love the colors they, it's been such a lovely knit i love how the stripes look on the bottom of the foot i'm definitely gonna have to knit something else with the yarns that are left over because it's not using very much i've done all of that and there's still that much left out of a 20 gram mini skein so yeah i don't know when these socks are being released so keep an eye on hannah's instagram which is yarnia designs um because i expect she'll do a discount code when they're released but yeah i'd really recommend it especially if you're a, maybe a beginner lace knitter because it's really really simple it's so easily memorizable so you've got like one repeat for the colors and then one repeat for the um the the cream stripe in between and i had it memorized after like two or three repeats so it's really easy um yeah it's a lovely pattern all hands patterns are lovely she's very clever um and i have i finished her last test knit and i'm not sure if i showed you the finished socks and i know i certainly didn't show you the finished socks since she named the pattern but Claire has them because she used them at Wonderwall last weekend. So I'll save those for next time um, and show you again, just in case. I can't remember what stage they were at. I know I've shown them at some point, but I know they definitely weren't named. But anyway, final work in progress is another granny wrap shawl. I think I mentioned a while ago that I had loads and loads of scraps of um, self-striping yarn. And I didn't really know what to do with them because a lot of them weren't big enough to you know, make socks with or anything like that. And because they're self-striping, they kind of don't work so well for other things. So what I decided to do was to cake them up and I made these giant magic knot balls. Um, and I've still got other bits in here as well because I keep finding other self-striping yarns I've missed. Um, and I'm just knitting them up. And, you know, that's really fun then because there's no kind of yarn management like there was in my other granny wraps because I don't really mind how many rows they are because they're all different colours. Um, so it's quite crazy. It's probably what Ali would call uh, an ugly blanket. <laughs> um, and I think she'd be right. Um, but it's really fun and colourful. Oh, wow. And I'm thinking I might give this to Freya for her birthday. That's my goddaughter. She's going to be nine. Because um, I think she'd like to cosy up in something colourful and amazing like this. Whoa, there was lightning then. Whoa. See, I told you the weather would be different in a minute. Sunny when I started, thunderstorm when I finished. Um, so yeah, and it, this has been really fun because I love self-striping yarns and I've been kind of remembering the yarns as I go. So I remembered like this 
this first gorgeous pastel yarn was a skein that Hannah actually gave me for a gift when I had my hip surgery as a get well present. And then um, the one I'm on at the moment at the edge, this dark one, was the really cool um, Tiger King yarn that Fab Funky Fibres did. And um, this one here, which is quite wide, was um, it was a Harry Potter self striping. Oh, more lining. It was a Harry Potter self striping. I can't remember where it was from, but I made my sister in law a pair of socks and they were like really fine micro stripes, but they were cool. It was like something to do with Bertie Bott's beans. Um, so it's like, just really nice to remember them as I go along. Um, and again, that's just one that's nice to pick up. Maybe if Jasper's happily playing, I can just sit and put a couple of rows on, but is easy to pick up and put down. So it's always nice to have some projects like that on the go for when I don't have much concentration, but I have a bit of time. So that's all the projects for now. Sorry, it feels a bit fast, but I knew I had a lot to fit in and I didn't want it to be a mammoth episode. So um, I've had quite a few acquisitions just because Claire has given me some different yarns as gifts and stuff like that. But I won't bore you with all of that now. Um, you'll kind of see it as I use it. But I just wanted to show you a couple of um, sort of special ones. The first one is this one. Ah, you might have seen this. It's kind of a bit of a viral uh, yarn recently. So the lovely, lovely, gorgeous James Makes yarn. Who is just, oh, I love him. He's so much fun. Um, he launched a special, it was like an Easter colourway called Beanie Babies. And even though I wasn't particularly into Beanie Babies, these colours are so me and I just had to have it. So um, I'm currently, well, I say I'm in the process of, I want to knit some new versions of my own pat sock patterns because like, I haven't knit them for years and like lots of the ones I had kind of, you know, were kind of washed out and really not very nice anymore. So I thought it'd be nice to knit my own patterns again and have some fresh samples of them. So I think this might go towards one of those. I have got a pair of those to show you that I've done already, but again, Claire's got them as a sample. So I'll show you another time. Um, this skein is one that Claire gave me. It wasn't actually a second. This was one that she had, John dyed her um, a sweater quantity. For Christmas and she had one left over so she gave it to me which was very kind um, and this is the Mallard colourway which is just gorgeous um, when I was running the shop at the last vlog this was one of the most popular colours and this is on the extra fine merino nylon Donegal nep so it's 75 15 10 merino nylon donegal nep and it's so soft so it's got it's like glowy it's gorgeous and it's got the lovely neps and what i thought i would like to do with this um is make jasper a little jumper for his birthday um so i have learned my lesson on knitting things from for jasper as i've mentioned before um and he's a very big boy he is almost into two to three clothes before he's even one um, so I will make sure it's plenty big enough um, so it, it will probably fit him like autumn winter this year but I think that would be really nice and because it's little it won't take long so I probably will get that done in the next three weeks hopefully I'm undecided on the pattern my go-to is usually the flax light by tin can knits but part of me wants to do something different because I'm just kind of in that kind of mood where I'm like I didn't want to just keep knitting the same patterns over and over again because it's kind of it's a bit tedious for me it's probably tedious for you when I keep sharing the same pattern so I want to kind of try and broaden my horizons a little bit so looking forward to that anyway the thunder is now coming and it's gone very dark so I think it's time that I signed off so don't forget to leave your comment underneath um with the word bird street or one word um if you like to have a chance of getting this prize um and you have until the 27th of may to do that so thank you for watching thank you for um sticking through to the end and i will see you hopefully in a couple of weeks time where i will announce who's going to be receiving this and yeah happy knitting bye